three servists. Hey. 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 Welcome to How to Be Friends with Dave and Sean. Hi, Sean. Hi, Dave. For those of you that are just joining in, for those of you that have been following along first off, I want to apologize for not having a uh, an episode last week. Okay. We got busy. We have lives. And things are getting sideways real quick. I'm starting nursing school next week-ish. And, uh, yeah, that schedule is coming right at me, Sean. Yeah. Right at me. That schedule sounds painful. Clinics, clinicals start week two. Wow. It's a hybrid program, but there's a an in-person class every Friday. Okay. So, yes... This is the podcast about how to be friends, because even when my buddy has had a rough day, hitting the white claw and didn't have enough time to chow, and even when our schedules don't come together, the the fact is that this is still an example of, like, man, we still got to come together. Yes. But now we're going to split apart. Okay. (laughs) Because we got to talk about new army stuff. and So, okay. We have this wonderful podcast where we basically sit around as a couple of fat reservists talking about how things aren't so easy as fat reservists. And one of the things that isn't so so easy is um, you've got you've got your life to live, such as why we didn't have our episode last week. And then you get started with a brand new. Let's just for example say you're with a brand new forward resuscitative and surgical detachment and then you're tasked with helping all of the officers and everyone be able to shoot appropriately with a brand new weapon qualification program yeah and so if you're a full-time soldier all right you take your full-time time with that and you do it but when you're like a full-time employee, part-time soldier, full-time student, full-time dad, and then you got to do this on the side. We're having fun. So my friend Sean is helping me out with this, which is interesting from a distance because we're trying to hash out the idea of this. So I want to get to what's kind of grinding us up uh, in terms of the red dots. But have you seen the actual uh, qualification standards yet? So the new qualification standards pretty much matches the Marine Corps qualification standards with exception of accuracy and distance. Uh, You have to do a standing, a kneeling, supported prone, and an unsupported prone. No. No? No. I mean, you may be picking it up right, but it's a little little different order. There is a... I don't care about the order. Do you shoot while standing? Yes. Yes. Do but you do twice. it from a kneeling position? Hang on. Okay. Did So you didn't read through the details yet, did you? I read what you kind of sent me and yeah. saw that there was standing, kneeling, supported prone, unsupported prone. Okay, so it's... Which didn't strike me as too nutso. It, it's honestly kind of cool. Um, I'm really glad that they're doing this. This is a much practical thing. You You start from a standing position fast freddy pops up which of course if you don't know fast freddy is the the 25 yard target which always caught us off when off guard when we were prone because we'd have to kind of cant up to get that sucker you'd have to keep your eyes open pull up a little bit get him and then go back at it right so the difference is with this you're standing he pops up you fire that's basically the start of the test because then you go straight down to prone unsupported, I believe. I got to get all these details together and finish your 10 round magazine. Okay? Drop magazine, prone supported, the next 10 rounds. Okay? Drop magazine, you go to kneeling supported on a wall. Okay? So you got to find a way to grip your rifle on a wall, which is honestly good training. 10 rounds, drop magazine, and then uh, standing supported, you're still on the wall, you're going to lean into the wall, and 10 rounds. Still have to get 
23 out of 40 to qualify. Okay. However, the two things that make this more fun is number one, it's timed, okay? From the moment that you start to the moment that you end, you've got a limit of time, just under, or just over three minutes, right? Okay. So magazine changes, position changes, all need to happen. And suppose, this is what the statement is, somewhere in those four magazines, there's a dummy round. You will have at least one weapon failure. Okay. Uh, honest opinion? Hit me. You guys are screwed. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it feels like the ACFT, like a soldier who's actually serious can pull it off just fine. But if you're going to be one of those reservists that does not bother to take it serious, yeah, you're screwed. Yeah, that is that's extremely problematic. Um, mainly because that does require training. Uh-huh. Um, and... One, the reserves, you're not going to have time to do it. No. Um, and two, our unit was lucky to qualify most people to begin with. Correct. alone with new standards. So, yeah. I do not foresee, I do not foresee a lot of first time goes. goes. Yeah. You uh, and I have both been in the unit and have some officer gleaming as he brings up a, a target that says, hey, look, specialist, I hit 23. That's good, right? To which we've been like, yeah. <laughs> so the only saving grace. Or you're is... like me and you're arguing with the, the range NCO about, oh, that's not 40. Yeah, it's 40. No, it's only 39. Hey, asshat. Look at those two little holes. Yeah, they're touching <laughs> each other. Yeah, that's not one big bullet. Give me I my 40. <laughs> I told you, by the way, about the one time I got 40 out of 40, didn't I? I don't believe so. Okay, I don't know if you were there. I don't think so, but we're on paper, right? Shooting, and I get done with my shooting, and I'm feeling pretty good. Like, oh, this was a good one. This one felt really good, right? You know, you're doing that thing where you're, like, squinting, like you're going to develop eagle eyes and somehow... All right, able... like, suddenly I'll be able to see all the holes in the target. Right, and I'm looking... And my target, and I see, puff, puff. Somebody else is shooting your target. Right, and I'm looking around, and I'm like, what the hell? And sure, I think it was Shu, if you remember Shu, I think he was next to me, puff, nailing my target. I was like, so, dude, do you know which target you were shooting at? He's like, yeah, the one in such and such. I'm like, you mean my lane? He's like, oh. So I tried to do this honestly, Sean. I really did. I took my target, and I looked at it, right? <clears throat> and I was like, there's no way I can count this right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count the misses, right? And I'm going to take credit for the misses. There were four misses, Sean. So I was like, no matter what, that was expert, right? 36 out of 40 is expert. That would have been my first expert. I walk up, you know, my fat little trash going up. And I tell them that very thing. I'm like, there's four misses. I will happily take my 36 out of 40. Someone else was, and they count it, and they're like, no, nah, there's 40 holes on black, so 40 out of 40. And I was like, all right, you know, your call. All right, whatever, guys. So I got my perfect. Hey, back to the point, <laughs> the, the task at hand. So the one saving grace is, and okay, so I, it, it's been foist upon me to help the soldiers in my unit shoot well. And of course, I like doing that. And um, in tooting my own horn, okay, so you're not only one of the best shooters I've ever met, but you're one of the better shooter trainers because you have all of all of the minutia, right? And I'm looking at this test and I'm actually thinking it's something that I'm apt for because since it is a timed test, with a lot of changes, the way I'm seeing it, honestly, is you're just going to have to teach, I'm going to have to teach these people to calm down, focus on their breathing, focus on their front sight post, and just hit the targets as they come. Yes. And as I, yeah, as I'm seeing it, if they're, if you, you get the fundamentals together, and you go slow and you go easy, hell, you knock out 23 targets and run out of time, cool. You pass. At least it's a pass. Right. 
the problem is a lot of people are really bad at just the general basic rifle marksmanship skills to begin with. Right. And I think you're going to have a lot of <clears throat> didactic in classroom BS. I'm not going to do it. I'm Sean. This is someone has made the mistake of making me NCOIC over this. And I am not going to didactic, dick, dick, dick it up. First thing you're going to have to do is get weapons pulled from the safe. Yeah, well, yes, yes. That's and not you're going actually. To have, that's not you're that. going to have to teach them the fundamentals in a classroom, step by step by step by step, before they ever have a chance of actually passing this. Which brings us to our next point, and what I really need your help with is the red dots. Because they are a little cheat mode. Yeah, the red dots are cheat mode. Red dots are fine. Red dots are easy. Yes. You got to so, zero the red dot, though. Yes. So we don't need to do this in the podcast, but we'll need to. I will be reporting in. For anyone listening, uh, I will be reporting in with the, the direct setup, and we will go from there. But, for any, again, for anyone listening, red dots really are cheat mode. I... I your pistol, yes. with that red dot, I think was like the first time I really did any substantial rounds on paper with a red dot. And that was too damn easy after all the iron sights. The rifle was a red dot, too. Yeah, I guess it. I guess it was. Yeah. I guess, well, yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'd done that. Both before. of them are set up for optics because of that. But I mean, the five five six is is it's a it it's a laser gun, so. I guess the red dot didn't matter much. But it, it might help my soldiers. So. But you have to figure out how to get them to qualify with the M68 CCO. <laughs> yes. If you're interested yeah. in having the same equipment that the Army uses, it's also known as the Comp M2. I think yes. have an M4 and an M5 now. It's essentially the Comp M2. It is a two MOA red dot, not magnified. It's just a red dot tube. I think it's a 30 millimeter tube. The one that you sent me looked pretty good too. What was that? It was a Sig Sauer. I actually have it saved in my That's Amazon. That's a Sig Sauer Romeo 7, which also has a two MOA red dot on it. Yeah. yeah. And that one will do for 3X magnification. bucks, And you can yeah. get a 3X magnifier for it, but it is not magnified. Oh, it's not? Okay. Well, My no. rifle that you were shooting is running a Romeo 5 with a 3X magnifier on it. Can, can the Romeo 5 run without the magnification so it could fill both purposes? Do you remember when I told you how to flip the magnifier up and down on the side of the rifle? You push forward on the button and flip the magnifier I up and down? So. Yep. Yeah, you just flip it off to the side. However, Beautiful. the Army CCO is not magnified. The only purpose of the, the close combat optic, and this mm -hmm. is what I try to explain to people, is the only purpose behind the red dot is it gives us the ability to eliminate aligning a front and a rear sight. Because once the red dot CCO is zeroed, mm -hmm. the way it's projected inside the tube is basically acting as lining up a rear and a front sight. So wherever the red dot lands, that's where the bullet goes. Mm -hmm. So in reality, getting people to qualify with a red dot should be much simpler, as long as the red dot is properly zeroed. Right. <clears throat> yeah. So we're going to find out how to do that. That's going to be awesome, which is another fun part about being a reservist. I got my AR, and it's a nice AR, but I got my AR before there was a run on them so there was a grand for that thing now it's a miracle if you're gonna get a single round of two two three for less than 75 cents oh uh, out here in vegas yeah nine, nine mil is going for like a buck around that's ugly yeah that's ugly it's nasty so now you combine the fact as as well that for the loadout that i think we're using i've, I've got to get the 200 hundred dollar red dot Right. I've got to get the $90 backup iron sight, take my handle iron sight off. And, you know, that little laser tool might be useful as well, if for no other reason to ma make sure that my my iron sights are, are okay. I, I'll have to zero everything again. So I'm going to be in this 
great. It's going to be in this for. Yeah, I mean, I would I would say if you plan on magnifying it, maybe go with the smaller Romeo Red Dot. The only advantage to the Romeo Seven is it is a larger tube. Tube. So if that is a concern of yours, then you know go with that. But I prefer the Romeo Five because it's short and you can back it with a magnifier, and it still only takes up that much space. I'm not want. worried about having a bigger tube. I was going to say, it's behind me if you want me to show you my tube. <laughs> I would love to see your tube. Yeah, why not? Let's show the fans. Right, let me show Flip you. Flip it out. Oh, my God. For those of you who are listening, first off, Sean made the mistake of trying to get up with his headphones still on, which was beautiful. Um, secondly, uh, it, these are not euphemisms. He is uh, literally showing me his firearm, so uh, I will make a point to make sure that this gets up on audio version just to force anyone listening on audio version to head right to YouTube and check it out. Now, our good friend has uh, done his safety check to make sure that his firearm is clear. It is indeed empty, and uh, here we have it. I assume you're not talking to me because my headphones are off. So, It's our beloved audience. <laughs> Right. Okay, so that's a Romeo Five. Oh, show. It's a yes. yeah. It's very stubby, and yeah. then you have the you have the magnifier, which is you know a pretty good footprint. But when you don't want it magnified, mm -hmm. it'll flip out of the way for you. So it makes it so that you probably can't see it behind me, but well, I can't see the red dot, but it looks pretty good. Right, so your yeah. red dot's going to be down the tube, but once you yeah. magnify it, puts it in your line of sight, and you know, it does everything you need it to do. Yes. Um, I prefer that, even though a lot of people are going to what they call a low-power variable optic, which is like a one-by-six one, boy, one by six scope. So, from what I'm seeing on that, it would be very difficult to have the magnifier and the backup iron sight, but... From what I'm seeing, there. Correct. You can. Now, here's the thing. You could run the red dot further forward. Yes. Run the magnifier further forward and then have a buoys on here. Yes. But Buies. I had a nice $200 set of backup iron sights and I gave them to my father, and I'm not ready to eat another $200 purchase. No. Now, okay. And from what I'm seeing, did you use the A4s, the M16A4s, when you were in basic? No, I think I was running A2s. We we had them in Benning, of course. Hey, home of the infantry, follow me! <laughs> they they had them in Benning, and that's what I learned on. And and that's the, the one that has the little the little peg sight that flips up. And I'm quite sure that that'll fit under this the space of that uh, red dot there. Right, and that's the thing. Like I said, if you move it forward, the, the key is you have to have the Picatinny rail spot. Yeah, yep. So if you were to move this forward, and it's important mm -hmm. also, it, it, all this fits. I have basically what they would call like a monolithic rail, right? It all lines yeah. up together. But you have to make sure all this crap will fit on your receiver. Yeah. So yeah, if you were to move a Romeo 5 forward, run like this Vortex magnifier that I've had uh -huh. for years, and you could still have a flip up. And ideally, when this is down... Uh -huh you would be able to flip up your rear and ideally it would either co-witness or give you a one third co-witness. Sure. Sure. So you could see the rear and front sight through that tube, which is another benefit of having a bigger tube is because you have more space to work with to co-witness your iron sights. Yeah. Okay. So it seems like it's not the worst idea in the universe based on what I'm seeing there. I don't think I'll have enough room on my rifle for everything because I, well, maybe I do have that, but I don't have the continuous rail. like. If you're not worried about magnification, you could easily run a Romeo 7 with a flip-up iron sight on the back. No. What I'm going to do to be maximum badass here is I'm going to get the coaxial magnifier. So when I really got to reach out, I just camp that sucker to the side and look through it because I'm awesome. Are you talking about the offset red dot that you use? Yeah, I'm not, no, come on. That's ridiculous. No, no I, I actually had my red dot mounted like that for a short period of time. Yeah, um, and didn't like I, it. it. Right, I'm not doing that. It's just you're adding weight and bulk, and I right. really like my rifle's already heavy enough. I want to keep it. 
light. Which is funny too, because you're a strong man. But it's I yeah, totally but the, the, I I'm like I just want a coyote gun, right? Like it doesn't need to have like the flip down bipod and all that. Yeah. No. Okay. Just humorously speaking, you know how everything walks away in the military? Everything has a, finds a way of disappearing and all this? Yeah, how you coming on stealing me stuff? <laughs> I'm still trying to find a damn flick. I, actually, I, I have the forms that I needed. So, okay, I have a plan. I, I could buy them on Amazon for 20 bucks. So. You, you can get a flick for 20 bucks? That's got to be some cheap. I don't want to talk about that. That's they're also like used Marine Corps flicks that are solid tan. They're not like the shitty ACU flick. Oh, okay. Well, that's proper. But okay, let me to the point. So it is nice that in the FRSD, just you know, when we were standing around the 396, walk watching these, you know, 915th people going back and forth, being like, "What are those assholes? Do they get to do what they want?" Yeah, they kind of do. It's like we would need to draw weapons. We go to the armory. We draw weapons. There is no hubbub for the for these little units, and it's kind of nice. Um, so yeah, in that regard, it's funny because I'm signing out stuff. I'm working with Shu. He's signing stuff out to me, and you know we we detail the magazines and everything. And I'm looking at it, and it's interesting that the army will detail all of these things. But we've got a front pistol grip on these rifles, you know. Kids were badass. Yeah, but and nobody's keeping track of it. Ha! Yeah. That sucker could come right off, and it's not on the hand receipt. If I actually liked those things, mine. But I have one, and I don't really like it. Yeah, and it's got, like, a little knob on the side. It's not, like, it's not the most secure mounting platform. No, and don't get me wrong, okay? I, I get I get it, okay? I just complimented you for your ponderous strength, using the word ponderous specifically, just to poke at you a little bit. But you also have length in arms, right? I can work out all day, and for me reaching forward to where most of those are mounted, I don't like oh, it. Right, and I mean, pretty much everybody uses the C-clamp method anyways anymore. I mean, right. the, the foregrip is not, that's not comfortable. Yeah. That's not a comfortable, like... It's not natural. It doesn't feel good. Yes. Now, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and blame this on the idea of um, uh, educating our audience, but I just want to make sure that I know for sure. When you talk about that seat clamp, you're talking about gripping the barrel. Yes? Oh, God. Okay. So, for once, once again, for, my, for our massive audio audience, my friend right now with his finger on the trigger... Yeah, just okay. like that. That's a C clamp. Yes. Yeah, I actually have to remember to do that when I want to be more accurate because I so commonly go down to the, the, the magazine well just because when I'm moving the rifle quickly, that's easier for my T-Rex arms. Yeah, it also puts a lot of weight out in, you know, front, forward. Yes. When you're trying to do that. So, yes. yeah, I mean, that's, I, that's supposed to, you know, but the method changes every 10 years. It does. And you always get the guy that's got to harp on his particular way. You've always got the guy that's got to be like, well, yeah. I was on a deployment with special forces. Yeah, basically, basically me. every decade there's a set of Navy SEALs and Rangers who ends up running with one of these like Blue Force gear or training companies and all of a sudden the system changes because that's what the high speed low drags used. Yeah. Because friggin' Jocko Willink couldn't run with anyone he trusted enough to tell him to shut up. Sorry. He's popular on Joe Rogan show, right? Uh, yeah, he's popular among... He's basically popular among any and is person... It, is it who, Willink or Willink? I'm, it's, I'm quite sure it's Willink, and he's very popular among anyone who likes to lift. Yeah, I'm also not ripping on those guys. I'm just saying that the, the systems constantly change, so it's, you know... To be fair, I have a, a massive amount of respect for anyone that can pull that stuff off. I'm really ripping on the people who takes whatever they have to say as scripture. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. yeah you, I have got a lot that, of res you got that meme I sent you, <laughs> Joe Rogan. Is this a good <laughs> podcast guest? It just <laughs> Random Navy, random Navy Seal. Random Navy Seal. Yeah, no, it's not. 
Okay, so um, I, I have to make an apology, um, Colonel Sutherland, if you've made it to this point. I <laughs> I had notes for your text, and some of them were pretty good this time. Man, life's coming at me fast. So instead, I want to skip to Woke Winter Soldier. Yeah, spoilers. Yeah. Spo okay, so yes, if anyone is in the middle of watching Falcon and the Winter Soldier and you have not already guessed how it ends, you're not even trying. You're not even trying. I was like trying to lie to myself. Maybe Bucky could end up being Captain America by the end. No, of course Bucky's not going to be Captain America. No, and I think it's awesome that, that uh, Falcon becomes Captain America Falcon. It's just, America. yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, honestly, he gets to keep the wings and he gets the shield. Okay. He's not a super soldier, so it's a really good offset. It's a great offset. Right. Um, he is spot on in the show to the comic book appearance. So if we get another season of this, which I honestly hope that we do, if we get another season of this, um, hopefully we get to see more of that. Um, very accurate. <sighs> but it was okay. It shoved a lot of woke down my throat. It did. Okay. I'm I'm going to give Disney credit as woke as they are for not completely forcing it. To me it felt more like pandering than it did preaching. It definitely felt it felt like pandering. Yeah. And one particular moment, okay? This can be true for anyone, anything. If anyone thinks that I'm a racist, just change the race. So I'm going to say it this way to keep me from getting canceled from our, you know, 25 viewers. Okay. If a white Captain America came down out of the sky and made everyone happy, and he turned around, and everyone cheering were white fans recording him, well, that'd look racist, honestly. Yeah, they'd look very The Boys. <laughs> Which is a good show. Yeah. Is, we might come back to that. Yeah. So, so to do that with this Falcon it felt like just total pandering. It, it was... It, it really did. And let me put it this way. When they started looking into, like, in the first few, few episodes where him and his sister couldn't get alone because of everything and the way it was, and they were kind of tackling, like, the issues of being a black American, I was like, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Like, cool. It was... let's, let's view this as, you know, how people live their lives. Yes. But... By the last two episodes, it became the black guy becomes Captain America show and start. I mean, we completely ignored the, the female terrorist who we could yes. have completely had expanded. A good message. Yes. Right. Completely expanded on her character. We could have focused a lot on Bucky's redemption. But really, Bucky just was in the buddy scenes where they're fixing a boat. Right. Right. And like he was strongly. Okay, first off, Sebastian Stan can act the hell. Yeah, out and of that he's, role. he's fantastic in the role, and there's really good chemistry between them. Right. And then you have uh, the female, the arms broker. Oh, lady. power broker. Great, power broker. Great turn, by the way, to turn her into a, a major comic book villain. Right. And you, you have all these opportunities to. And then the, the guy who was playing the new Captain America who got like a 30-second, oh my gosh, I'm redeemed, and now I'm going to actually help the good team. They they took what felt like it was starting out as a story that was well-balanced between a bunch of characters, mm -hmm. and they were like, ah, uh, make it black. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it felt very much like pandering to the audience. Now, was it still good? Dude, Anthony Mackie's the shit. Like, I'll watch the hell out of Anthony Mackie. I, I, I Absolutely. really... Absolutely. Yes. But when I'm feeling like you're doing this for something other than creating mm -hmm. something entertaining, and, I, and I'm like, yeah, I, okay. I, I start to check out. And credit where credit's due to Anthony Mackie as well. When he was preaching, 
in front of the news, in front of the senators, that monologue could have gone south real fast. Yeah, no, they, they yeah, it, but it did well. Anthony Mackie did a good job of doing exactly what Captain America is supposed to do and coming from a position of, like, genuinely loving people. Right. And, like, doing it that way instead of the... And that it, that's one of the reasons that I felt like it stayed on the pandering line of being super woke instead of the preaching line of super woke. Okay. And it got close there. Oh, it got close. I mean, Part it, was of the re- it was really right. nice later on that, that, you know, Bucky got to be the token white guy. Yeah. During the barbecue at the at the at the at the dock. And I want Sean, I wanted that in my defenders so bad. I Okay. Iron Fist and Power Man. Power Man and Iron Fist, right? Was like the first time in comic book history that an African American superhero actually had a white sidekick. That's really what it was. Power Man was the draw in the Marvel Universe, maybe all of comic universe, I can't remember just which. He was the first African American superhero to carry his own line, made best buddies with a rich white guy, and the rich white guy was his sidekick, as occasionally it should be. Right. And the the def- the defenders got canceled before they got there. I I will say this though, as as much as it felt like they were pandering and woke, when he showed him his statue that they had added to the Captain America spectacular, thing, and obviously thinly veiled Tuskegee, right? Right. I actually think that it was a good way to repackage Tuskegee. But go yes. on. Yes. Yes. Very. I mean, it's basically Tuskegee. Yeah. I thought that was awesome. I uh-huh. thought that was 100% deserved. Mm-hmm. And a really good part of the show. But once again, it just felt like there was too much pandering overall for the entire thing. It felt like it was a show that honestly needed two more episodes in the season to really fill everything else out. Yes. Um, okay. And I can't, I can't remember. Okay, so let me just hit that real quick. Because... They they really followed well the theme that was following the Captain America movies. Kind of spy film, you know, kind of uh, uh, talking about the development of America. Right. They were forgetting, though, that those were directed by the Russo brothers, who are masters at weaving many characters through. Right, which did not happen here. Right. So now, oh, and by the way, if you're like, well, you think it's pandering because you're racist. No, because if Disney wants to make a show about the black super soldier from mm -hmm. 1940s, I'll watch the shit out of that because the guy who played that character was awesome. Fucking almost made me cry. Oh, And I'll tell you exactly how I tell tell you exactly what I want to see. I want to see a show where someone is is doing his autobiography. And oh, have, that's cool. You get the flashbacks. So you, modern day guys talking to the guys, he's writing the autobiography and then it goes into the flashbacks about the stuff he did. And then, right. Yeah, that way that, you can that would still be a really have cool setup. that awesome actor and go back and, and have to a younger black actor. Yeah, yes. no, that would be, that would be really cool. That I mean, be. overall, I, what pisses me off is that they had all these really good characters, but it didn't feel like, they had enough time to utilize them properly. And then, like I said, the last two episodes, it felt like it changed into the, you know, African-American awareness campaign. And the first two episodes, I'm like, oh, wow, we're getting into the original super fucking program and we're going to uh-huh. learn about all these uh-huh. original super soldiers. And, uh-huh. oh, here's a uh, who's the German guy? Was Zima, that's what it was about Zima. to say. Zima was fucking fantastic. Was, oh my god. You, and, you would have never been able to tell me that Zemo would have been a good character. He was a showstopper. Right? But he was fantastic. And then the last yeah. two episodes turned into social awareness week. Yes. 
Um, I, I got to look up who that actor was. He's great. He's God, absolutely he so wonderful. good. Yeah. And when they introduced him as Zemo in Civil War, he, I'll say it clearly, he was just a plot tool. He was just... Absolutely. He was just... He, like, Zemo in the comics is is a pretty big deal, right? And the show made him a big deal, especially after him being on the raft, still managing to blow up the super soldiers that he was after, which is a, it's wonderful that he will be continue to be involved, but what a wonderful way to actually plug a kind of reverse fascism into a modern packaging to say that this person, he's, he's still into eugenics saying that like, you know, these super things are an abomination. He's got a really compelling story to keep going after superheroes. Yeah, absolutely. And then also one thing you don't see about, you know, Baron Zemo. One is that he's rich as shit, so that's cool. Right. Right? Two, that he's not just like a crazy, like, you know, super intelligent bad guy. When he puts on the mask, it just starts laying people out you're, you're like, like oh okay uh, yeah. yeah all right mm -hmm. he's got all right yeah he can yeah. actually kick the crap out of some people which mm -hmm. is something you don't see though when he interacts with the rest of the marvel universe he's just kind of the calm super intelligent guy he's a lex luther is all he was yeah, yeah but then you see him actually fight and you're like oh wow he can actually kick some garbage in yes that's yeah. interesting and, and again um Gotta love the inclusion of Mar Madripoor into the Marvel Universe now. Um, this is, okay, you DC fans out there that are gonna get triggered by this, this is one of the reasons that the DC Universe just can't keep up is because they don't have as many rich environments and as much, like, rich lore. And Madripoor, uh, another comic book analogy for... For basically any of the Southeast Asian countries where like everything can just go sideways because the government right, it's supposed to be like south of Singapore or something, right? Right, right, okay. exactly. Which I mean, the X Men were in hiding there for some times. Wolverine and his patch years. There's so many good storylines that they can do. Now let's just see how much more Disney can ruin. <laughs> hey, I will see that I will say this, DC fanboys. I've been watching HBO Max and there's a lot of DC stuff on there. It okay, yes. Uh okay. speaking of, is the boys DC? Uh I believe the boys was either Dark Horse or it was its own thing. I'm gonna look that up right now. Yeah. Um That's a great show. DC <laughs> fan people. Oh, it is. It's it's Wildstorm, which is a DC Wild. subsidiary. Okay. DC's Harley Quinn, <laughs> the cartoon, uh -huh. is probably one of the funniest damn things I've watched in a very long while. Uh -huh. And I just want to thank you, HBO Max, for putting a very adult, <laughs> horrible language, violent Harley Quinn thing on there. Mm-hmm. Uh, voiced by uh, who is her name? Katie Kuko, is that it? The, oh, the, from from uh, the Gold Dang Nerd Show. Yeah, the Nerd Show. Uh, she's doing fantastic with that. Absolutely hilarious. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Fire everyone. Warner oh, and Brothers. Alan, Alan Tudyk's like half of the characters on those shows, as it should be. Fire every one of the directors. Of the DC movies, period. Zack Snyder. I don't care what your cut supposedly did. It still sucks. Fire them all. Take everyone that is working for the DC animation and put them in charge of the movies. Yeah, maybe they'll need a better cinematographer because, you know, obviously animation is different than the camera. But in general, the DC animation is lit. Yeah, it seems to be really good on there from what I've seen. Like, there is some, they're not calling it Teen Titans, but there's like a version of Teen Titans mm. on there. It seems to be pretty decent. Yes. Yeah. 
a lot better than lined up shirtless Zack Snyder superheroes in dank emo garb finding <laughs> ways to resurrect the one person who so actually... I, dude, oh. I, I thought somebody was joking the other day. I went on their HBO Max and there was Justice League and it was Justice League Zack Snyder cut. And I was like, and I clicked on it. I was like, they weren't joking. It's four and a half hours long. Yeah. Why? Zack Snyder, your cut doesn't mean everything you filmed. You it, can cut things out of it. And, and None of, of those characters are portrayed well enough, and that script is not good enough to justify four and a half hours. No. No, any of you out there who love the DC Universe, okay, stop putting your faith in Zack Snyder. Just because this... Uh, he's the bad boy of comic movies. I liked The Watchmen. I think we've talked about it before. I actually liked The Watchmen. But you could get away with The Watchmen. The Watchmen was good for its time, yes. Right. The, you could get away with it because it was sardonic. It was critical. It it was uh, Americana with all of the, the dank around it, yeah, right? And Willem Dafoe dong, except blue. Yes. Because we're not going to... That's going to be... It's going to be a recurring character. That's just how it's going to go. But... I'm just going to make a sock puppet, and it's going to be, Hi, I'm Willem Dafoe's penis, <laughs> showing up to the podcast again. Do I do I seem confusingly large to you? <laughs> We're going to interview it. We're going to interview the sock puppet penis. Where? No, but <laughs> the, the Watchmen... People wanted to like it at first in general, and then everyone kind of went, eh, this is kind of too long and sucks. Give it six months of the Zack Snyder cut in existence. People are going to do the same thing. This is too long and it sucks. It's not, it's not what's going to save. Yeah, also, no. best Batman I've seen so far, and best, uh, basically, yeah, it's definitely Harley Quinn. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You do not have to recast Batman for every single... Oh, no, God. It, it, who plays him? It's that guy. Oh, my God. The guy from... from Was he from... Was he in Twilight? Yeah. Anyway. The dad from Twilight? What? No, not the, the guy from Twilight. Although the dad from Twilight was maybe one of the only good things in that entire movie. His mustache was the best actor on the screen. Um... He was the kid who played Cedric Diggory in friggin' Harry Potter. Um, and I forget his name a hundred times. Cedric Diggory. Diggory. Uh, Diedrich Bader as Batman. Oh, you're talking about in the comics. No. No, in I'm, I'm talking about in the show Harley Quinn. Diedrich Bader, who was, uh, he was on... We did, that, yeah, that one Third Rock from Harry. the Sun. Yeah. And, right. No, you're, no, it's the Drew Carey, not the Third Rock. But let me be clear about this. His best work was definitely in Napoleon Dynamite. Okay, yes. And Alan, Al, Alan Tudyk is Clayface, Joker, Calendar Man, Dr. Trap, and Condiment King. Condiment King? That, that name is one syllable away from being really bad. Uh, J.B. Smoves as Frank the Plant, who is... <laughs> What the poison, hell is going poison, on? Poison Ivy's pay, uh, poison Ivy's pet plant, who is played by Lake Bell. Okay. Like the cast in the show is fucking outstanding, dude. It. Oh, these... and James uh, Adamian is Bane, who is the best Bane I've ever heard or seen. What? And what's the secret? It's just very, very Bane-like. Like, like huh? he's. He like throws little hissy fits and stuff. Not not very uh, not go. very crab face. Huh? It's like I burned, go, 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 go. like the reason <laughs> the, the reason he ended up taking over the stadium is because he lost like one of those bar trivia quizzes about the stadium, and then he's like, "No, actually, it was the Patriots." It's just like I'm gonna burn down the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> so you. So you were you were talking about the Watchmen, which is fantastic, and and I want to bring that back up because I saw something, because once again, 
if we're woke, we got to be super woke. And it said when they now in the next season, when they when they uh, reveal who this original superhero was back in the day, you know, the one we don't know the. What about ever they're saying, well, now he's got to be black because Falcon and the Winter Soldier made the original soldier black, so he better be black. Now, did you just confuse Watchmen and the boys? I was talking about the boys. Did I say Watchmen? Yeah, that's okay. Sorry. Sorry. I'm only a few episodes into um, the boys. Uh, Carl Urban is a gift. Carl Urban, you are a gift to the world. I don't care what anybody thought about Dread. I thought you were wonderful in it. Dread was astounding. Dread was a fantastic movie. But let me get to the point. You know he dated Katie Sackhoff? Really? For like four years. Wow. It's one of those things where I was really sad that they didn't procreate. They would have Katie been like... Sackhoff and Carl Urban would make some pretty interesting children. Now, Katie Sackhoff, for people who don't know, she played a very good role in Longmire. Uh-huh. Uh, also, I don't she know be- what she... She was, became famous as the fe- the female Starbuck on the... Right. Star Galactica reboot, which she was, was amazing. She was Starbuck, right? Okay, yeah. and let me be clear about this. Again, I'm even going to take my spit guard off for this so I can get super rap on this. That's how you do it. If you want to woke something, don't make a big deal of it. Just do it. If you yeah. want to take... What, one of the more famous characters from the 70s and turn him into a lady. Blackula. Just do it. Just do it. Don't make a big deal of it. Just do it. Yeah, thank you. Like, honestly, when you suddenly start patting yourself on the back about it, that's when it becomes an issue, right? Yeah. Oh, can I just hit real quick, by the way? (sighs) Former Vice President Joe Biden getting up and addressing Congress today and being like, look behind me. There's two women for the first time in history. Yeah, don't say it, dude. Thanks. Because now you it seems old like you... zombie. Right. I would like to harken back to a couple of weeks ago where, once again, I would like to make the point. If you are the white person out there touting how much you are progressing minority causes you're the racist in the room yeah just 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 be nice to other people be nice to other people. why can't we just treat people as people yes i was laughing about this the other day because everything is woke everything and don't get me wrong some of it some of it's good some of it's good don't throw the baby out with the bathwater for the most part a bunch of it is just a bunch of bandwagon bullshit yes but it made me think about writing and literature because I do read a lot and I do listen to audiobooks a lot. Mm-hmm. And I saw a tweet and I just wanted to reiterate this here. The way that male writers write women, <laughs> <laughs> as I continue to read, they were absolutely right in that it's like Cassandra's boobs were boobingly boobed. <laughs> and her butt was buttingly butted. They, they're the way they're described is always like one dimensional and yes, yeah. And I've been running into that a lot with the books that I've been reading and listening to lately. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, it's very painful. So what you do is exactly what you're talking about. You make a tweet. Okay. I mean. One of, a patient said this to me in relation to this, okay? He said he hates Amazon, okay? And I'm like, yeah, I kind of hate them too because uh, they suck at their job. Why do you hate them? And he's yeah. like, it's their logo. And I'm like, their logo? He's like, it looks you know, like a wiener? Because it looks like a penis. It's a, with a thing on the end. Okay. Worst reason ever not to like a company. Guess what I see now every time I see Amazon? You see the wiener. I see the wiener. Right. So you don't have to cancel books. You don't have to say, well, Stephen King wrote every book as a juvenile. And in The Gunslinger, he had a scene where a handicapped African-American woman 
like interest has sex with a demon to beat the demon and therefore he needs to be canceled because that was objectifying women was that, of color. Was that book two or three? That was book two. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for remembering that. Yeah. You don't have to make a you don't have to make it a crusade. You can tweet out just like you're saying how incredibly juvenile and dumb something is and it just it taints the water. It does. And people, you and just I, have to do better. I read the Tower novels. Uh huh. And then I listened to the audiobooks. Uh huh. Okay. The character yeah. you're describing. Keep in mind, uh -huh. when these guys read an audiobook, they give all the characters voices. And as soon as I heard her voice the first time, it was a caricature, wasn't it? It was an absolute caricature of a 1970s black woman from New York. It was painful to listen to. It was, I was just like, mother. Fuck. Which like brings every, like, every time I try to argue with people, things aren't as bad as everybody makes them out to be. It's just that the media we surround ourselves with makes things seem ten times worse. Right. And I fire up an audiobook. And you're like... Pfft. And I'm like, wow, that's okay. I was wrong. Yeah. Which... Okay. So, acting is acting. Okay. If acting, I had a, a discussion recently. I think I don't know if I if this came up before with a coworker. The the movie Hush. Have you seen the movie Hush? No. Blind woman being tormented by a potential killer. No. Excuse me, not blind woman, deaf woman. Oh, it's a good movie. It's, it's yeah. one of those like one of those slow burn thriller horror movies. Anyway, yeah. I'm telling this coworker about this. Um, she speaks sign language she's you know she very much supports deaf people and all of those things right so i'm telling her about this movie and how awesome it is and she says well was the woman was the actress playing the woman deaf and i'm like no she's like and why not i'm like because it's called acting 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 and so so in that regard if if Actors, if you want to continue to have jobs and not just have everything taken away by people who aren't acting, i.e. a real blind person playing daredevil, <laughs> you kind of need to step up your game and go. don't go straight to the caricatures just because it's easiest. Right. Yeah. Don't be like, hmm, I'm reading a Stephen King novel. This is a black prostitute. From 1970s New York. What's up, you dab turkey? Like, and I can't even do it as badly as he did it. It was bad. Yes. And I was like, wow. In it, I actually stopped listening to that as an audiobook is because it, it ruined it ruined it for me. Yeah. It it honestly ruined it for me. But Alan Tudyk, you can play anything you want. You can play deaf. You can play yeah. blind. Yes. Also, I want to meet the blind actor who can do the choreography for the Daredevil show. <laughs> you can't do it. Yeah, because I, I will shake your hand, sir, because you would honestly be Daredevil. So, by the way, hilarious inclusion. I'm sorry. Am I being ableist? I'm just saying friend. that is incredibly yeah. difficult choreography to do with a blindfold on. Uh, not being able to see. Um, to that point. The daredevil that showed up in the boys. That was hilarious. Which one was that? Okay. So that that really annoying woman had just taken care uh, taken over as like handler of the seven, and she introduces this ninja dude mm. who's blind to Homelander. Oh yeah, he kills him like immediately. Yeah, he like claps his ears like, what are you gonna do when this happens? Poof! And it's like First off, again, congratulations to the boys for writing yet another character who is actually what Superman would be if Superman actually existed. Yeah, because Superman would be a dick. And it wouldn't even be his fault. Again, I cannot... One of the recurring themes is going to be me crapping all over Superman. If you're a god, you will go insane. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. What the hell are you eating? Orange chicken, baby. Oh, I'm jealous. Make sure next time, next time right. you bring it up for everyone. Bring it up for the whole class. 
Which, considering there are 26 subscribers, that's a small buffet. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy. Okay. So let me get let me get back to the fun stuff. We got we got to wrap this up because it takes us for okay. Couple of just one, two two quick questions. Sean, expert questions for the very end, because I didn't want to forget this. Number one, k and filters, are they legit? Yes or no? Yes, but to a point. Okay. Now, the caution on the k and filters. There is criticism to say that in modern cars, the red oil lining can dirty your mass airflow sensor. True. True or false? True. Okay. Therefore, if you're having a professional... If you equip a K&N filter and you have a professional change your oil or whatever, it wouldn't hurt to be like, hey, can you clean my mass airflow sensor? Don't. Don't. Go, okay, tell me more. Don't. Oh. Just don't. You don't need to clean ah. your mass airflow sensor unless some. the more you dink with that thing, the, the, the bigger your chances of breaking it or hurting it. One, you have to use specific mass airflow sensor cleaner. Uh -huh. Two, you're yes. not going to have a problem with the mass airflow sensor if you just clean and oil the filter correctly. So if you're an idiot who didn't do that. Yeah, the problem with the K&N filter is the, yeah. the turnaround time on servicing it is a pain because you got to degrease it and rinse it out and let it dry. And then you have to oil it and let it dry. So your car is going to be down for like a day. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Not that this might have happened to anyone. No, I so. can't imagine it would have. Also, for the cost, depending on what you're doing, just put a standard paper air filter in it. Oh, I'm actually here to tell you, Sean, 100%, I get better fuel efficiency with the k and I'm sure you do. It's obvious, but I also bought the other one. Just, okay, real quick, I got to get this fast. Mm -hmm. That's like having the extra paper filter in yeah. my trunk is yeah. also the like, in case a volcano explodes emergency kind of thing. Because right. It, at least that sucker I can shake out, put back in, and go. Or you run the paper filter for the day while you clean and oil your actual can filter. That's exactly what it is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this has been an enlightening episode, Sean. Uh, you continually get more and more handsome every week. Is I'm... it because I'm anti-beard and I have a beard? Yes. Okay. Contradiction is part of what makes us as humans beautiful. His funeral is June 3rd. I can't take this off until June 3rd. Interesting. Yeah. Holy moly. I said, I'm going to grow a beard in honor of Henry, and I won't shave it until his funeral. <laughs> oh, that's a sweet thing. <laughs> and my wife hates it. Oh, really? Won't even kiss me. Oh. No. Okay. I... I mean this respectfully. Everyone I've ever met named Henry, I've wanted to call Hank. Hank, out there in the universe. Yep, discussion I constantly had with Henry was how the hell anybody got Hank from Henry. Right, his, yeah. his the, the beard is going out to you. Okay, yeah. and on that wonderful note, we do have to end. I want to thank you, Sean, for being an awesome friend. Thank you you too, buddy. All right, good night. You too. Have a great night. Orange chicken.